Hey everyone, it is Wednesday, October 5th. The time is 11.45 a.m. and the temperature right now is a rather nice 16 degrees Celsius. And I am here in Niagara Falls on the Canadian side. And this is the intersection of Dorchester Road and Lundy's Lane. And for this one, I'm gonna be taking a walk south down Lundy's Lane. And I'm gonna make my way over to the Clifton Hill tourist area. And this is a street that became famous for the Battle of Lundy's Lane, also known as the Battle of Niagara Falls. And we'll actually be passing by that battleground at some point up ahead here. Phil's all day breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I've done videos through Niagara Falls before. But I've never done a walking video through this part of town. Lundy's variety with Cuban cigars and a lot of flags. that you can't get authentic Cuban cigars in the U.S. And given that this is a border town, you tend to see a lot of places selling Cuban cigars. So I'm, I believe I'm heading east and in the other direction, to the west of Dorchester where I started, there's a number of attractions. I think there's a large indoor water park, and there's a big bowling alley, and a driving range, and some other things. There's the Blue Lagoon Dining. And they have dancing. But on the right here is a very well known spot. This is the Flying Saucer Restaurant. I actually ate here a few years ago. Well, I think a year before the pandemic. Celebrating 50 years. Yeah, it's really neat, obviously flying saucer or a UFO themed diner. And I remember the food actually being pretty good. I think it's a fun place to come check out. This feels very much like an American city, more so than a Canadian one. I'm sure the proximity to the border has something to do with that. There's a Harvey's drive through open until midnight. So when I get down to the falls, I'm planning on making another video along the waterfalls themselves. Would you say that themselves about a waterfall? I don't know. Probably not. And I used to be an English teacher. There's a place called the Blind Pig. There's a Swiss chalet on the right. And coming up might be one of my favorite parts of Niagara Falls. We used to have an Arby's in Toronto at the Eaton Center. 
think when they remodeled the two food courts down to one mega food court, we lost that Arby's location. There might be one or two kicking around the GTA. I think there's one up in Pickering. There used to be one in Oakville on Royal Windsor Drive. mix and match. I'm staying at my mom's, which is just around the corner from where I started recording this. So I had a homemade breakfast. I think I'm going to have to sneak over to Arby's later today. I'll be going back to Toronto tomorrow morning. Brand name shoes. of motels and that sort of thing the further south I get. I think from Dorchester and Lundy's where I started down to where Lundy's Lane turns into Ferry Street. It's about one and a half kilometers. And then Ferry Street becomes Victoria Avenue. And that's where we'll find Clifton Hill, the big tourist area. Taco Bell and KFC. Maybe it's all the fast food joints. That reminds me of an American city. Action Kid was saying yesterday that Clifton Hill kind of reminded him a bit of Niagara Falls or <laughs> duh, of Las Vegas. The fry, number one Korean fried chicken. These are all over Toronto these days. It's good to see they got good fried chicken up here. It's not a dollar store, it's the 99 cent depot. So I think the population of Niagara Falls is a little over 88,000. It skews towards being an older demographic. In the mid 2000s, my parents moved up here. A lot of people Coming to this area to retire is a much lower cost of living relative to the greater Toronto area. Big B Comics. And we'll actually, I think I'll get to go into that battlefield I mentioned earlier. Notice being a pedestrian here can be quite annoying. The traffic light cycles seem to cater to motorists. Here we've got a green light and no walk sign. And a few people trying to walk. Is it that if you don't press the button? It won't cross. It won't let you cross. I don't know. I'm just gonna walk behind these vehicles. I pressed it. <laughs> Have a good one. There's a stag shop, discount souvenirs and t-shirts. Man, I should have worn my shorts today. I asked my mom this morning if shorts would be a bad idea, and she said, oh yeah. Well, I think she was wrong on that. I'm wearing these kind of 
Uniqlo warmer running pants. So I think for a lot of people, this hotel isn't quite in the best location if you're coming here to check out the falls. You have to drive down. I've been to this Irish pub before. for a patio spot. the Valley Village, oh, the Dollarama, and coming up is the famous battlefield. There's a motel that's seen better days, the Sunrise Inn. So during the War of 1812, when the U.S. was repeatedly Trying to capture British Canada land or British Canadian land. They launched numerous assaults, including one on, I think the sign says July 25th in 1814. And they launched that battle from the Niagara River. And it culminated in a clash at this field just up ahead here. And it ended up being one of the bloodiest days in Canadian battle history. There were over 1,700 casualties and over 258 killed on both sides. I think I might want to be on the other side of the street actually. Maybe we'll cross here. They seem to know what's up. They're just going for it. As <laughs> there's an advanced turning green. Maybe they don't know what's up. Caesars, the Fanceroni pepperoni is here. So I think of those 258 or so killed, about two thirds of them were on the American side. And what's weird is I've been coming to Niagara Falls to see 
my parents a few, quite a few times over the years. I've been here as a kid, but I don't think I've ever been to this battlefield. I'm really just going to stick my neck in here and check it out. The only... I imagine every school in the area has done countless school trips to this site. Restored in 2001 as the Canada Millennium Partnership Project of the Friends of the Lundy's Lane Battlefield and the Millennium Bureau of Canada. This was the old Frelix Tavern dating back to 1830. Okay. It's all these kind of somber visiting a place like this. For many decades, veterans of the battle were available to conduct personal tours. That would have been a very long time ago. I think the fields stretch out that way. I'm going to get back on course and continue. I want to say south, but it's east on Lundy's Lane. But this is what Lundy's Lane is most famous for. if these are actual graves or if they're just symbolic. You often think of battles as taking weeks, months, and even years. This was just one really bad day, and I think by midnight, the U.S. was in full retreat. The Battles of London Lane was a turning point in the War of 1812 to 1814. British reinforcements began arriving in North America following the defeat of the Napoleon Empire in Europe. There seems to be a cemetery on that side, so maybe the battlefield was on either side of Lundy's Lane here. I think I can see some of the buildings on the American side of the falls peeping up in the background. Peeping up, peeking up. <laughs> I think I've seen one public bus coming this way. I'm not sure if they're on the Presto fare system. I don't think there's Uber or Lyft in Niagara Falls. I may have known that person. And there is the Skylon Tower. And I might be heading inside and up that thing later. It's 
that observation tower off in the distance. Ken was mentioning on the stream that he was hoping that either me or Action Kid would go up there on our trip to Niagara Falls. He's off on an excursion to walk over to the American side. So that's his big plan for the day. My plan is to do this video down to the waterfront. And then I'll go for a walk along the falls in the second video. Then I might live stream or I might head up to the Skyline Tower. There's a pure vegetarian Indian restaurant. And this is the old Main Street coming up. shop. Sorry, it does have a bit of a rundown vibe to it. I've been fooled by this before. I've crossed over thinking I could cross south at the next light cycle. But that was not to be. Got a signal. Since then, Niagara Falls has seen an uplift in American tourists. Here's the Niagara Falls Museum. Or rather, there it is on that side of the street. And the Maple Leaf Tavern by the music. Late week, or I guess it's an early weekday afternoon now. It's 12:09. It doesn't look like there's a lot of people here, but I've never seen a lot of people out on the streets in this part. Big Texas Bar and Grill. There's a large cluster of hotels. 
over there, you also find the newer of the two big casinos in town. Ramada. So I could take this bus, it goes up to Dorchester. Here we go, Niagara Falls. Bus will arrive every 30 minutes, it looks like. Not very good frequency. the street called the Portage Bakery and just next to that is a parking lot where you can park for free. That's where I parked last night. I think I started some videos from that spot. See all the cars parked off to the side over there. If you don't mind walking an extra 10 minutes or so, it's a good way to save some coin. And we are cutting through some hydro fields. Exciting walk. Mama's Inn, that uses the Mama's Pizza logo. So here you can go left to the bridge to the USA, straight to Clifton Hill and Casino Niagara, and right to Fallsview Casino, the convention center, and the Ringland, a giant amusement park that is in dire need. Uh, some kind of refurbishment and probably a rebranding as uh, so they don't have a very good reputation when it comes to animal care. Something big is going on here. King's Inn, near the falls. I think they should put near in quotation marks. But they've got an outdoor pool. And this is a style of building that used to be quite popular in Ontario. I want to say going back to the 60s and 70s, a lot of restaurants and diners are located in very similar buildings to this. It's currently a Dairy Queen. You used to see those all over the place in the GTA. And at some point, we were no longer on Lundy's Lane. It might be here. 
That sign says Ferry Street. I think it might be Ferry Street until you get around the bend just up ahead, then it becomes Victoria Avenue. I'm not entirely sure. But welcome to another fabulous Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada intersection. There's a the New York plate. Do I have to ask to get permission across the street here? Do I have to press the button? Stanley Avenue. There's a lot of little inns and motels. There's a truck with the flag for some reason. Skyline Tower, and you can see all the mist from the Horseshoe Falls coming up behind it. Pedestrian traffic spot where that guy is. And look at this place, the Cadillac Hotel. That's got 60s vibes to it. Five dollar parking all day. I think that price would probably go up depending on the time of year. Maybe a little bad here. This seems like a little traffic spot. Niagara's best inn. Oh, is it? Hit a pocket where there's some well known hotels. There's a Fairfield by Marriott. 
Yeah, the courtyard is very Thanks to a quality inn and suites. The days in across the street. Is a Hooters, and yesterday I walked by with Action Kid after we both got some food that was a little disappointing for what we paid. And we saw a sign that said "Burgers and Fries, $7.99." And instantly regretted not going to Hooters. I wonder what their special is today. Uh, the sign just says. Tuesdays, burgers and fries, $7.99. So maybe that's just it. We missed it. And I believe I'm on Victoria Avenue now. Johnson Plaza by Wyndham. A hojo. Public parking, five bucks. That seems to be the going rate. There's some more. I'm certain that's more expensive than tourist season. And the place that Action Kid tried was Adobo Fresh Burrito last night. I don't think he was too pleased. We'll see a review of that coming up on his extra channel. The Niagara Speedway, a multi level go kart track. You know what? I'm on the wrong side of the street just because they are blasting music there. Parking, five bucks. I think when it's only five dollars, my free parking idea. Isn't exactly the best one. But this is a gorgeous day. And I think I said I might walk over to Clifton Hill. I'm not sure if I said I would go down to the falls or not on this one. But what I think I'm gonna do is just end it up here at Clifton Hill. And then that will be a separate video. I'll do Clifton Hill in the Falls. So this one will be Lundy's Lane to Clifton Hall, I guess. As I have to talk over this music at the Econolage. Souvenir Mart, Subway. 
Apparently there's going to be fireworks tonight. And it should be at 10 p.m. or fireworks last night. I'm going to think about recording that. There's Montana's barbecue and grill. just around the corner from here. So I'm just going to cross the street here and we'll get a glimpse of Clifton Hill. Always got to press the buttons here. <laughs> they value drivers more than people walking, I guess. <laughs> Oh, and these traffic lights here are covered up. That's interesting. I just want to cross the street and give them a, a closer glimpse <laughs> of Clifton Hill. I'm going to go get myself a nice ice cold coffee and possibly a donut. Maybe we'll just walk down to Tim's. There we go, it should be changing. There's a look at the sky wheel, which I think is 53 meters high. Look at these studios. A lot of attractions in this area and fun things to do. There's the Ripley's, believe it or not. Set, come out and think about the next move. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. Walking down Lundy's Lane as I listen to Dancing Queen in the background. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you wish to support the channel, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides, and there's a super thanks button appearing below these videos. And there is a roller coaster on top of that Burger King. Anywho, <laughs> thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.